Good morning, let's rise and shine, wake and bake, let's burn one before breakfast. Let's put the fire on this motherfucker. What are we burning today? Nigga, we are burning some fucking ODB. What's that shit? It's a mixture of weed and roaches. This shit is, this shit, it's shit, but it's fire. Yeah, whatever. We doing what we doing. We gotta do what we gotta do. Let's go ahead and run this intro. Yeah, good morning, my YouTube motherfuckers. That's right. I'm fucking smoking some ODB. That's what I call it anyway. That's when you got some fucking mediocre ass weed that, that don't burn good. And you got to mix it up with some roaches to make it all right. And that's what it is. It's all right. And you know what? Like I said, you know, you hook up with the roaches, right? This shit be fire. You know what I mean? Um, but that's where it is. That's what it is. Yeah, you know, I ain't tripping. Um, life be what life be, you know what I mean? If you ain't been at this fucking place in your life where you've ever had to mix weed and roaches, then I don't know what kind of fucking stoner you really ever call yourself. You know what I mean? I'm busting my ass. I'm trying to get to that fucking back where I was smoking that good, good. But you know what? Here's the thing, right? What I've come to find out is it's not too much good, good right, right now in the streets, man. It's like it's flooded with mids. And it's, it's terrible. Ugh. Uh, anyway, um, I got I got some shit coming up. I should I should be getting some of them good good fucking fire hydro fucking ponic fucking time bug goodness cushness coming up here pretty soon here in a day or two. We'll see what's up. But anyway, um, we're gonna be on here episode twenty eight. The Bear Skull Commission number three. We are going to be putting on some second coats and um, basically just, you know, moving in and about, putting on the second coat of, of the skull. As you can see, the first coat makes it look like almost ghostly. And when I coming in here with the second coat, it actually starts to, to form and take shape. Um, by the time I'm done with this second coat, it'll look like it's done. Uh, the camera makes it look like it's done, but it, it isn't. It's going to need fourth, fifth coats before we're at a stage where I can call this done. So stick around and um, I got maybe one or two more episodes I'm going to do with this before I move on to the next, on to the next one, on to the next one. Um, uh, like I said, I'm not going to be finishing this for you guys um, because I want to make sure that the people that this painting is for is surprised when they receive the package that they're um, hopefully pleasantly surprised that, you know, they see things that they hadn't seen and were maybe, you know, just, you know, I, I want them to, you know, fall in love with it instantly, you know, love at first sight type shit. And, you know, if you've seen it before, when it shows up, it doesn't mean that it's not cool. But, you know, when you order a mail order bride and she shows up and, you know, you, you see, you find out that she's all tatted up. That's like, damn, that's badass. I ain't know you was like hooked up, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's kind of it. That's, that's all I'm just saying. I'm just trying to, you know. Um, anyway, um, what do I want to talk about today? Um... What I want to talk about is um, having a, a, a propensity to find ways to do things that are ahead of the curve, right? Um, the, the idea of me doing velvet is something that is you know, it's, it's definitely an old school thing. You know, a lot of youngsters, you know, 
barely have any memory of velvet painting at all and uh, i think if if you're if you're generation x you know but if you're like generation z and you're like a millennial you you don't you don't you, you have no real clue what velvet paintings are all about um but because you're into the nostalgia of things and you know you're running around you know having a, a, a culture from a time before your time all generations do that you know all generations go back from wherever they are they go back about 30 40 years and they adopt that 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 tradition it's it's kind of what i've seen over the years in the tradition of the age that i was in growing up it was it was it was very much that you know it was in the 80s and everybody was slipping back to the 50s you know what i mean the 50s and 60s was real popular as i was you know that style but then there was like this new wave of things like because there's always this new wave of things and in the 80s is when i think music sort of became sort of nuclear electronic fucking type shit um and that introduced i think a whole new world of, of electronic music or whatever um but the thing about um being ahead of the curve in this is that um it was it was many years ago it was like 13 between 13 i can't remember offhand right now um that i did some velvet paintings for you know for an art show and that was a long time ago and now here doing it now again i realized that you know the the culture of velvet painting hasn't really changed much like um at the time when i was in san antonio doing that nobody was doing velvet like nobody it was fucking unheard of it's still very much unfucking heard of and then there was a, a show this past weekend in san antonio where a young lady had a show where she did velvet and a few of my friends went and what they told me is that the young lady had uh, a few pieces there and she sold them all and it, it reminded me of my art show that I did velvet pieces and, and I sold them all and in what in conversation with my friends what they were talking about with her and what they would kind of gathered was that she was the only person in San Antonio doing this which would mean that if I were back in San Antonio, that it would be finally after, you know, say 15 years, now there's two people in San Antonio doing this. Okay, so now, like I said, this is like the beginning of the wave. This is like when you have something that is very, very cool, yet is completely obscure right and at some point in time or another it is going to be touched it is going to come in people are going to start to get the feels about these things and then boom here it is it's all over the place right um i believe that i am out here on the wave and i can't even see the shore yet that's where i feel with this is that um, I'm out here in no man's land and I only know at this point in time of one other person out here really doing velvet and it's not that I, I don't I'm not kidding myself you know I imagine that there I've always had this thing about who's doing what and how many people are doing it right and so back in the day when I was a young kid young kid growing up in New Jersey and shit and running around in Philly and New York it was one of those things where okay who's doing graffiti and how many people are doing graffiti right and when i was doing that shit, i felt like you know there was probably a good maybe hundred thousand kids i'm gonna say out there writing between philly new york washington dc maybe that's a huge number but you know just in general right maybe that yeah, might be a, a fucking giant number um, maybe cut that let's say 25 grand right Twenty-five thousand people right 
Um, and then in looking in my mind over the course of like doing that, how many people worldwide, you know, maybe, maybe 50, maybe let's get to now, like now. So ask yourself, right? When I was doing graffiti, then the wave was small and it was way the fuck out, right? Now, how many people are doing graffiti? The, when the wave has already fucking been crashed on the shore and, you know, pushed in its fucking tsunami wave all into civilization to everywhere, right? Um, the question is, right, how much saturation is it, right? How saturated is the market? Now, there's graffiti everywhere, worldwide. It's, there's some fucking, it's all kinds of, it is shifted styles and all kinds of shit, right? And so now here with Velvet, I'm at a place where I think I only know maybe two people in the world right now. Not that there's not more, there certainly are, but you know, our numbers are fucking minuscule. And so we are on something that when it finally does hit the fucking shore, man, I think we're on the cusp of something pretty big, you know? And it's fun for me to be in this position again since like, you know, in so many things, you know, I, when I first started doing tattoos, in the early 90s it still wasn't fucking a trendy fucking thing not everybody had fucking tattoos you know and and black people doing tattoos man that number was a small fucking number back in 1996 you know what i mean now shit now there's black owned tv fucking tattoo shops you know what i mean it's it's so it's fun to be in this place where i feel like i'm back on the wave out here in the ocean all by myself where there's peace and quiet and I can push this wave along and then let it crash on the shore and, you know, enjoy it for what it is, right? And I think Velvet is one of those things that is going to certainly in the future make a big crash. Um, so I'd like to thank you guys for watching and sticking with me, you know, and, you know, right now I'm in episode 28, you know, and my views are fucking minuscule. You know, I did a weed show and uh, it was called uh, Weed Jersey. There might still be some shit up there about it. Um, I'm not sure if it is. I'll find out and take it down immediately. Uh, anyway, but you know, at one point in time, I did this this episode, and the episode was about a review of Gelato Runts, right? And this was the same thing. I had it adult restricted because it was weed, just like this is, you know, adult restricted because I put weed in it, you know. And just because of that, putting that word. You know, I went from like no views to over fucking 200 views on that fucking thing. So I know that this can grow organically and it's just that, you know, I feel like over time this thing is going to start to grow, you know, and I've seen it even here, you know, when it was just me looking at these videos and now there's a few people, you know, I think I actually have three subscribers. Woo Thank you guys. I appreciate you three. You know what I mean? It's the three musketeers up in this motherfucker. One day, one day you guys are going to be here and it's going to be 300. And this is fucking Sparta up in this bitch, right? Let's share this motherfucker. Let's see if we can't get the 300 fucking subscribers up in this motherfucker. Now, I'll give away a $300 piece of velvet when I get to, to my 300th subscriber. <laughs> How's that for some YouTube um, merch? fan stuff anyway you know what they do how do you do that anyway um i love painting velvet it, it has brought me something in in a place where a lot of other styles of painting and a lot of other things that i've done um it, this velvet has a way of, of just smoothing out my feelings like velvet you know it it just does you know, even when it's difficult to paint, it's still velvet. It's still like, hey, baby, it's okay, baby. You know what I mean? Velvet is like the fucking Austin Powers of fucking painting. You know what I mean? It's groovy, baby. It is. You know, shagadelic. It, think about it. It goes right to that shit. If you got a, a fucking place where the fucking shag carpet, nigga, you better have a fucking velvet painting in that bitch somewhere. Or it's not groovy, baby. It's not. Anyway, um, yeah, fucking velvet, man. What do, what do I need to do to capture your attention? To get you to capture your imagination? Do I need to update some some modern fucking 2022 fucking shit on some vintage feeling fucking 
velvet and shit tap into some some of that old school bring it to the new school and fucking you know sure i could do that I, I really like i said it isn't necessarily that everything has to be a skull it isn't necessarily that everything I, I, i'm an artist i paint all kinds of stuff right and you know i've had a conversation with some friends are you paying me a velvet elvis you know what i mean and it's like yeah if i if i do um, cause I say, cause I, I don't, don't want to paint no damn velvet Elvis. You know what I mean? Come on. Let me paint something better than that. Um, but I mean, if I do, you know, I'm not sure if I would even want to fucking put it on, on, on the show. You know what I mean? I'll just paint it and send it to you and you know what I mean? So it, to me, the velvet Elvis isn't worthy, but maybe, you know, maybe I'll figure out a way to do a velvet ODB. Wouldn't that be fucking badass? You know what I mean? Baby, I got your money, don't you worry. I said, hey, maybe I'll do some ODB and Velvet and you'll pay. Maybe I'll get the money, get the money, get the money that way. Anyway, um, like I said, I'd like to thank you motherfuckers for watching um, and riding the wave with me. Um, we're going to fucking do 10 toes on the fucking tip of this bitch and ride it all the way in. Um, and then when it crash on the beach, we gonna fucking go into the casino and spend that money. Blackjack, bitch. Full house. You know what I mean? I'm having a good time in Atlantic City. Um, we're crossing up all motherfuckers velvet fucking ropes. Wearing fucking velvet ass fucking suit. Listening to the Velvet Revolver in my fucking Beats by Dre ear pods up in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Nah, that's crazy. I'm, I'm not worried about all that shit. Um, let me just say that money burns, and so it doesn't really even mean that much. But um, these velvet paintings, man, get your velvet painting while you can. These motherfuckers can last a long time, last forever, you know what I mean? And I know that, you know, I, what I've seen, I see what I do. I like what I do. I hope you like it too. Get you one, and you can be a part of the, the my, my black velvet crew. Um, like I said, thanks for watching. Um, check me out. Like I said, I got maybe one or two more of these with this skull before I move on to something more interesting. You, I think you'll agree. Not necessarily more interesting than this. This is fucking badass, but you know, you're already used to this one now. All right, art by Calvo. Um, get it while you can get this motherfucker, because you know, I'm, I'm I'm fucking blowing up in this motherfucker. I like to thank you for watching. Love, peace, chicken motherfucking grease. Mount this bitch! Ouch! Watch where you're poking that, mister. Woo! We smell like weed in here!